I'm not doing any interviewing. I just get to answer the answer the question. It's brilliant. I'll do my best. Recording in progress. So uh, thank you to uh, Carlton Brunson from Brunson Media uh, for taking some time to be interviewed for my podcast. In actual fact, he's the first guest of my post podcast. How so, um, exciting. You have that honour. No, you'll go, you'll go down in history as the first. The, the first, first is always remembered. The first guest, yeah, indeed, <laughs> of course. Thank you for having me, Michael. No, that's all right. That's all right. Uh, so I've got a few questions as discussed I'd like to ask you. I mean, the first question is like, why did you choose the, the medium of video? Because you could, in particular. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for me, uh, I mean, I've created videos since I was the age of 12. I'm 24 now, going to be 25 this year. Um, so mm. to give your audience context, you know, 13 years or so. Um, a video experience but for the first like probably seven to eight of, of those years um, it was really gaming related so my background is in game development it's what I went to college for it's what I studied for I've been I've been quite an advocate game a video game player for for you know as every teenage kid probably has been um, you know for for a long time but I you know for a long stay and I wanted to be a YouTuber I wanted to be a professional gamer that kind of thing that was along of what my career initially was going to be um, but then I was like, okay, well, I kind of got to a point where it didn't necessarily fit or I kind of plateaued with where I could get. Okay, fantastic. So then I led on to, okay, well, let's actually create video games for a living, right? Okay. And then I was like, well, they kind of abuse your love for it from what I saw talking to people in the industry at the time and et cetera. So it, it was around at this stage where I was leaving college and had was given the opportunity to, to start applying for unis. And I had obviously created videos for that period of time and I was still doing it kind of as a hobby and as fun. And then I'd had some quite, you know, decent success with view counts. And as I say, I kind of got to a plateau level though with what I felt like I could do with gaming. And I was like, okay, so what do I want to do? And, you know, then around the same time, my mum got me a, a photography camera. And for those who don't know, the photography skill set and the videography skill set are very similar in regards to the tactical skills that you actually need. The only difference mm. is one is a moving image and the others are still images. And so I got into photography and I really enjoyed it. And I was like, okay, cool. So maybe there's something here, but I tried that for about six months. And then I got to a point where I was like, well, I'm not really creating videos. And I took a break from creating videos. And what ended up happening was I actually really missed creating the idea of creating content like this, that's talking to camera and, 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 you know, creating that video journey. So I was like, okay, so how can I take this new skill set that I've got and take it out into the world and, you know, create this video content that I think I, I could. And, you know, I've grown up in Salisbury. I love Salisbury. I wanted to showcase Salisbury as well. And so then long story short, I just started reaching out to local shops, local event organizers and be like, hey, look, I'm, uh, you know, just starting out. I want to start filming stuff. I want to start getting some experience. I want to really start getting a portfolio. So I'm to bring that work together and just sort of see do I actually enjoy this commercial filmmaking stuff right so long story short continue to do that for about six months to a year and then i kind of built a little name for myself and i was like right okay and at this point i was like yeah this is actually what i want to do and this is what i want to commercially do and i want to make i want to want to give this a real go so then i was like okay well how <laughs> right because then the question becomes how do you actually make a living from doing this um you know the concept of people actually paying you to do your hobby which is still something which to this day is still a bit okay yeah but then it was understanding about where I was in the market. So as I did it more and I built my name up a little bit more, I started then really understanding the business aspects and really understanding the business concept of, of where does video sit, right? And, and how does it work and, and, and how is it valuable? So that's kind of how I got started in a kind of quick synapsis as, as short as I can uh, hmm. make it. I mean, there's, there's other twists and turns through that that we can get into if you want, but a core basis that's that's kind of how i got into it and did you i mean were you looking at being a marketer as well to start with um, the marketing, was marketing and interest kind of, the marketing like the communication aspect has always been something that i've been interested in how do how how do humans communicate you know i have a uh, i also wanted to be a cbt therapist for a while until i found out for it would be like seven years in uni and then i would have five years of training to be a cbt therapist and it was like, this is a lot of, I would still be doing it right now, right? If I had decided to go that approach. And the thing is to me, I've always been interested in human psychology and what makes people tick, 
but also the communication and how we communicate and 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 kind of a natural progression to that came to comms and marketing right because they're kind of in it interconnected in some ways because you have certain levels of personal relationships or, or, or relationships with people but also then the public relationships that happen from that as well so it was something that I eventually had to then take on and learn because if you're going to run a video production company you have to understand where does video sit in the market overall right because yes you can and video is really powerful to do as marketing but you need to understand the fundamentals of marketing first before you can be like hey this is why you should do a video Mm. Or this is how your video could help your business. Yeah, yeah. I was just curious, um, going back to video, did you ever mm. work with the old school video videos and cameras, like 35mm um, and vid, uh, Super 8 and all that stuff? Unfortunately, I haven't had that experience. I, I, I hear that it was a humongous pain in the ass <laughs> um, and rather expensive to do right from people who i know who have done it and people who have been in the industry personally for me i've i've been very fortunate or or very privileged you could say in only using digital cameras which have the the you know the, the functionality of of just physical cameras part of me is like okay maybe i should have done some stuff on film to understand that process and get it but also uh, i'll be honest i've i've rather take the technology moving forward than deliberately take a backward step just for, to learn um, mm. when you know to be honest the most people are going to use digital uh, digital cameras or digital sensors uh, moving forward anyway unless you want a very specific look and there's very specific reasons you know some some quite high-end films are still shot on film now right and I think I think there'll be a place for film moving forward in certain genres and certain looks but as we mainly focus on the digital marketing aspect or the social media marketing aspect you can do it with film but it's just like you're just making your job 50 times harder and making everything four times more expensive uh than than it would be on a digital medium in that yeah. respect so because i've noticed your videos they're kind of quite um earthy quite you know got a lot of uh, atmosphere to them mm. compared to you know, when you watch a youtube video usually it's all if it's american it's all bright colors it's all kind of bright and shiny people smiling all the time. But yours is a bit yeah. more kind of atmospheric, a bit more, uh, you know, it has a bit more character, I think. For me, I think it's really important to wide that line between completely staged commercial and you're just documenting what's happening, right? So we specialize in really talking to business owners or, or, or talking to people who are real in what they do. I'm not saying that people in commercials aren't real, but when you're in a commercial environment and you're doing a commercial TV ad or, you know, something that's more commercialized, you're getting specific things that you need from that talent, right? That isn't necessarily, it's great for the story that you're trying to tell, but it is very, everything's staged and that's a specific look. For me personally, I would rather have it as genuine as possible and as fly on the wall as possible and more documentary style than we're going to script everything we're going to do this 19 times until you smirk in the right way or etc. Right. Like for me, I think it takes away some of the magic of actually being in the action, being there, talking to people, hearing their real thoughts, being able to really get across the passion that this business owner is feeling or this passion that this business owner has for whatever they do. Because at the end of the day, why do most people go into go into business? Because they're passionate about what they do. You know, I'm passionate about video. I'm passionate about helping businesses showcase what they do and, and help communicate to their wider market why they do what they do and how they do what they do. So that's why I do what I do, right? It's not because it pays well necessarily. It does. Okay, yeah, great. But everyone has to make a living. But that's actually a, a side thing. That's a, that's a thing on the side. Actually, the core reason why I do it is because I love doing it and I'm passionate about helping other business owners who maybe don't have the confidence to be across on camera, come across on camera and talk about what they do. Yeah, because you, you're not from Salisbury, are you? You, you moved to Salisbury, so, is that right? So I've grown up in Salisbury, but I, bought, I was born in a place called Dorchester that is a little bit to the south and nearer to the coast. Right. Uh, and, we lived, and we lived just up from Weymouth, so between Weymouth and Dorchester. Um, so a lot of my early, early, early years were, were around there. And then when I was, I think, seven or eight, 
uh, we then moved out to the outskirts of Salisbury. Um, and then I sort of grew up, went to the, a little bit of primary school, into secondary school uh, in Stockbridge, actually. And mm. then and then went from there, went to Salisbury College and then got local jobs and then built my production company here in Salisbury. Um, uh, so I've always kind of like for as long as I can remember really been Salisbury, but I'm technically not like. I wasn't born wholeheartedly in Salisbury. I've just grown up here and I've been here for, you know, the majority of my foreseeable, that I can actually remember a lot of my lifetime, right? There's a very small amount of years where which I, I wasn't specifically um, in that respect, so. Do you think uh, like Salisbury has influenced your your art or your, like how you oh, feel? Yeah, yeah. Because it's Absolutely, quite, yeah. a, it's quite yeah. a unique place, isn't yes. it? Yeah, it's medieval. I mean, then we've got medieval architecture, we've got Tudor architecture, obviously we've got the cathedral, you know, and for me, one of the main reasons, and I, I don't know whether you know this, but one of the core reasons about why I started Brandon Media in the first place was to promote Salisbury, because I didn't feel there was anyone necessarily promoting stuff that was happening. There was loads of events happening, loads of stuff happening, but no one was documenting it. No one was showcasing it. No one was saying, hey, look, hey, look at this. Hey, come to Salisbury because it's it's this beautiful place that we can always showcase. Of course, there's issues, right? Like, of course, there's units that, that have unfortunately had businesses leave and there's empty units and the, the high street is not in a, the best place it could be, but that's the same across the board. Right. That's that's every every town and city in, in the world, potentially, but definitely in the UK. It's not a Salisbury thing. Right. So, you know, for me, I, I think the only way we're going to be able to to move out of COVID specifically, which is what we're looking like we're doing, you know, is to showcase the, the, the people who are thriving, showcase and support those people who are maybe struggling. But, you know, they have really unique businesses and really things that, you know, are passion, passion driven. Yeah, yeah, because what I've noticed with your videos, um, it may be influenced also by the fact that you know you're in the, I suppose, more the country, country, but you, <laughs> but um, your video, well, some of your personal videos are quite um, personal. Then, mm. the, you know, there's no like I've seen some of your videos. We'd have to go into it if you don't want to, but they've been, um, you know, you've spoken without any filters, pretty much. You've mm. kind of talked about stuff which is. Could be seen as heavy um yeah but you kind of is, is that something that is, you think is an asset with your with your art with your i mean i think it's really a personal a personal decision right like whether you're going to or or not for me i'm completely healed enough to the point or, or understand the point or you know for those who know me i've gone through a lot of a lot of not crap necessarily like oh i didn't have a good upbringing or i didn't have a loving family or whatever i i had all of that and you know hearts out to my mom and she's done an amazing job and etc but i still had mental health issues i still had issues with school i still had bullying issues etc right like i but the thing is to me i think it's really important and if you are if you have the ability to be able to talk about it you are able to open up about it then you can help other people who maybe aren't right mm. because for me i've done a lot of work on myself to, to, to work on me and to be okay with the fact that some days I'm going to feel shit, right? Mm. Some of the days I'm not going to feel great and, and, and this is why, but that's okay, right? And it's actually well understanding then what are the causes of those, you know? Is it people in my life perhaps? Is it people who are maybe in my, my life for the wrong reasons? You know, there's lots of reasons and, you know, if we want to get into it, we can. I'm, I'm an open book, but I'm a deliberately an open book because I, I want to show that you can talk about it, that it's okay to talk about it. And that yes, you need to be strong and yes, you, it can be strong to talk about it, but also if you don't want to, or you don't want to talk about it publicly, that's fine as well. Right. Mm. Like I've made the decision to live a lot of my life on camera. Right. That's arguably quite narcissistic, but the reason why I've done that always core, I've always asked myself, why am I doing it is because I want to help other people whether that's do what I do or just smile or just, just be in a position where they can feel better about whatever is going on in their life and the fact that, okay, well, right now, maybe not the best time for you, but what about in six months? What about in a year, right? So for me, it's something which it didn't really take a lot of thought to do, if I'm honest. It was just like, yeah, this is, this is me. 
yeah you know? yeah yeah it was it, some yeah, it's quite powerful uh powerful stuff um you know it's, i think it's important yeah yeah and is uh you mentioned about being influenced well starting off with uh games and youtube mm. before that is a is, is a, like an influence from music or film which um, has, it, has kind of had an effect specifically or in general in general well in general because, or it could be a I specific mean, for director for example film director or there's uh, there's no specific music. film director i mean there's there's you know i i've gone through huge amounts of genres in music huge amounts of genres in films i've always consumed films i've always consumed music i've always been part of that entertainment sphere it's probably why i do what i do right part of it because you know for those who don't know a lot of video is audio based you know you play around with audio you add audio in you music is a very key important choice in why what the feeling and the emotion which you're going to feel from a video it's actually are going to be more important than the visuals but that's a separate conversation and you know you know I've, i grew up with things like lord of the rings star wars star trek you know leading into then things like inception etc things like that and it and it piqued my curiosity it piqued to what's possible it piqued to this concept of if you have an idea and you have a drive and you work hard enough that you can achieve it right because i think yeah we look at feature films and we look at you know netflix and we look at this and these entertainment concepts as unobtainable if that's where you want to go now i'm not saying for a second that i necessarily want to go into the feature film world because it's a very different world for me, it's not something I want to work in. I can still appreciate, though, the work and the time and the energy and the resources that go into creating something like Inception or insert uh, episodic drama or another, uh, you know, anything else that you can think of film wise or et cetera. You know, I, I fully respect a lot of people who do work on those. But the, my issue with those personally is they're so large and you're a cog in a humongous interconnected cog wheel that you don't get the sense of pride or you don't get the sense of, you know, I put in loads of effort here and actually it's meaningful in that project or it's a lot really meaningful. And that doesn't mean I just do stuff solo, but it means that I am like, okay, yeah, it was actually down to me that we got that idea to happen because I came up with the idea and I liaise with the team to make sure that idea could happen. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, um, what would you say was your ambition with, um, with, with, with your business and, and your, and your. What, uh, when I started work? or now? Uh, yeah. When, yeah. When you started and, and then now. Okay. I mean, when I started the, as I say, the first year was literally, do I want to do this? Is this something I enjoy? Right. <laughs> like, is this something I actually want to do? Okay. And then it was, okay, great. Then what? And then it sort of became, okay, can I make this sustainable? Can this actually become my full-time job, right? Does this make enough money for me to actually live on? Okay, fantastic. But now I've started, as you build and as you grow, your imagine that what you imagine possible is it becomes larger and larger and larger. And I haven't hidden the fact that I want to be the largest media agency in the world. Uh, that's the long-term goal. It's always been the wow. long-term goal yeah. for me. And I put it on the record multiple times. And the reason why I do that is not so that I can achieve it. It's so that what if I get 50%, right? The thing is that I think people need to understand about goal setting from my experience anyway, is you need to change your relationship to whether you get the goal, right? If my goal is to become the largest media agency in the world, full stop. Okay. But what happens if I don't get that? Right. Some people that would destroy them if they don't get it. To me, I'm like, did I put my absolute all into, and then my, my situation, my thoughts, my wants, my needs, my, my priorities changed before I got there. Okay, great. But did it give me a driving factor every day to move forward as much as I possibly could to go there? Yeah. Mm. Okay. So then what if I get halfway? Okay. So then that would mean I'm still a national, nationally known brand that's one of the biggest in the UK. Okay. <laughs> that's still pretty good if you ask me you know yeah. what i mean like but you've got to you've got to aim for that larger goal to be able to hit the thing below it because otherwise if you put things that are too objectively easy to get 
you're not going to be driven to push and to actually have the personal development yourself to grow to the, be the person who does own that UK franchise business or that UK media company or that world size media company. Yeah. Uh, and do you have like, are you, is Brunton Media just you or is it more of a collective I, where you're kind of like yeah. you and and like some some people you, people you work with uh, collaborators mm. that you work we, with. we don't we definitely do have collaborators and i can't i can't take all the credit anymore from where Brunton media's growth is now there's a lot of people we work with on a very regular basis that do help us serve our clients that's and also market ourselves so you know it's definitely a team effort it's definitely a group effort but from a traditional sense of the word, are they technically employed by me in regards to they work with Brunton Media directly? No, at the moment, right? That's because they don't necessarily want to, they're, they're contractors or freelancers. Okay, great. But, th you know, and I've been very open with that. In all my content that you've watched from this point forward, you, you know, one would know that I have said that. And the reason why is that is for two reasons. Number one, to be honest, it's cost effective for me to do at the moment. I'm in the position where there's too much work for me, but not enough work to have an internal team. Great, that will happen. But also the freelancers themselves want to stay freelance. They would rather have it as freelance. Okay, so then by me saying, actually, no, I need you in-house, I'm actually limiting what they want to do and not being able to give them the right foundation to be able to start their own production company if that's what they want to do or start their own photography agency if that's what they want to do or whether they just want to solely be a freelance camera operator or just freelance editor or freelance etc right like because some people do want to have that freedom to be able to work with other production companies that they got on with because they get to work on completely different projects and then this is one of the benefits of being a production agency we will go from one day of working on a music video for example to then doing some interviews to then shooting a promotional video for an event then we'll do something else completely different you know we might be then shooting action sports the following day so there's so much variation and that's why no day is the same. And that's why personally, I really enjoy what we do and, and, and you know, what gets me up in the morning, so to speak, um, in that respect, because it's, it, it's not, you know, we're not, it's not the same every day. Mm. Um, and what uh, projects are you currently work, working on? I mean, there's a couple of ones that are just finalizing and then there's a, like, we're in this weird stage between, there's a lot of stuff that we're just finishing up then there's a couple of contracts we bid for that we don't know whether we're going to get or not yet. Some of which I can discuss, some of which I can't. Um, most just because if we're not going to get them, there's not much point, but also some of them are under NDAs. So for non-disclosure yeah. agreements for those who don't know, um, which basically are just legal terms to say, you're not allowed to talk about this. Okay, cool. You know, but you know, some ones that I know you mentioned to me before the podcast that uh, I, I, I possibly wrongly assume, but you know, we can talk about is you know, we've just finished recently a, a kind of a content creation piece for a local pizzeria that basically showcased their making process, right? And the owner came to me and said, Look, I think you know, we need something a little bit more commercial. We, we're looking to, you know, obviously it's a sales tool. Right. It's a, a piece of marketing that gets someone to a point of sale. That's a lot of the content we create. OK, great. Fantastic. So let's create something about how they create their pizza, because it is unique. Right. They are one of the only wood fire ovens in Salisbury. Great. So that's a great asset to film and it looks beautiful and, and et cetera. But also then the other care and the other bits and the other you know fresh produce that they use for their pizza right? Mm. as well. Right. Because they do do things fresh they do do things to high quality that's why they're what's one of their isps and that's one of their values for that company you know so we i had a conversation with the owner and said look well, okay how are we going to articulate this how are we going to build that and then we built as you, you you can see through the behind the scenes video we built a storyboard that then we sort of stayed to the letter on because and we don't always storyboard stuff we can we choose sometimes we choose to sometimes we choose not to but what we're trying to do is we're trying to build that process and show that story of someone ordering a pizza perhaps we've also done that for them but also you know what happens when you when you order that pepperoni pizza or etc you know what what is that process like and we wanted to showcase that and we wanted to show it in an artistic an artistic way or a, or a very visual way and you know from from what i've heard seems to have been doing seems to have gone quite well hopefully right like yeah. it's very hard for me to say that but you know and then we have everything 
uh, from a counteracting point of view, we also did some that are a lot more sensitive that we need to be a lot more sensitive around because, you know, we just did, uh, we just finished and we're in the final edits of, which is a show, showcasing and promoting a dementia uh, music and wellbeing group. Um, and a lot of them, a lot of that process was around how do we actually, how are we doing this cautiously? How are we doing, you know, not just from a COVID point of view, but also from a respect point of view, right? These people are people suffering with dementia, right? Like we need to be respectful. We need to be careful. We need to, but we also still need to get the job done here, right? We still need to get the food that we need to be able to tell that story. And I think it's really important to, to analyze every job and understand some of the challenges that will come from those jobs, but also to keep your client in the loop and be transparent and set those expectations with your clients. And I'm sure you have the same with, you know, what you do as well, but I think it's, it's, it's always very unique and, and there's never similar challenges. Like they're similar, but they're not always identically the same. So the solution is always had to be slightly different. Yeah. Yeah. That's, it sounds very exciting doing all these different projects very different to each it, other it, it is it's a it's definitely a personal growth thing and that's one of the things that i really get from running the company and you know something that keeps me driving forward when times are hard because right the fact is running a business is really difficult right as you'll know and, and as others know who run businesses it's really difficult right like but you have to understand and you have to believe in what your core concept is about why you're doing it and for me it's to constantly get better in myself and constantly build and you know we've talked about mental health issues here today and we've talked about things like that and for me it's a way of focusing on something which is really important and can give you a way out of mm. this constant cycle of i don't like where my life is okay why don't i do something about it oh i can't do something about it because right and and so on and around 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 because if you're constantly pushing forward and you're constantly challenging yourself and you're constantly pushing the boundaries of what's possible for you personally, you're then going to be like, actually, why do I feel this way? Or it's actually, it's completely okay for me to feel this way because I've just done 80 hours a week or, you know, these things haven't gone right for me. Okay. So how do I, how do I reestablish that? And how do I change my relationship to that? Mm, yeah. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Good, good, good advice. Actually, it kind of covered my next question, really, or kind of covered it, which was like, what advice would you give to someone who was just starting out mm. doing like video uh, videos or doing marketing? What, what advice would you give? I mean, I think the initial the initial conversation is firstly, understand your own psychology and understand why you're doing it in the first place. Right. But. The second thing is, if you're going to say to a client, oh, you should be doing video, oh, you should be doing daily videos, or you should be doing this kind of video, have that evidence yourself. Do Have it as something that you do. This is, this, this is a double benefit, because if you don't have clients, create content so you can learn how to create content and you can understand what works, so you can develop your own skills. But mm. then also, when you have a client, or when you are in a conversation with a potential client, you then have a lot of stuff that you can show them. You have a lot of stuff to say, this is why it works. Because look, look at what we're doing. Look at the results we've had. Look at what, look at what we've been able to come up with for us on a, on a string and a, you know, on no budget at all, basically. And, you know, this is what we can do for you. Because it, it's hypocritical of me if I say, oh, client, it'd be great if you could do daily videos that are all portrait orientated because then you can go on tiktok and you can you know get randomly loads of views because tiktok has a lot of discoverability right now or oh we can go on instagram for you and we can post loads of reels and again the same thing's true or youtube shorts or, or anything like that but if i'm not doing it i be i look like a hypocritical prick mm. right so it's the same like if i've if i haven't got stuff to show why is video why is video powerful because if I don't have videos, clearly video can't be that good as I'll be doing it, surely. So that's very What's specific about? to video, but the same could be true if you're a copywriter. The same could be true if you're an ad specialist. The same could be true if you're a marketer. If you're not marketing, how do I know that you're a good marketer? Yeah, it's that authenticity which you need to bring with it. Yeah. Like, you, know, uh, you, you, have to, you, have to, you have to come from a place of credibility. You have to say... I know this works because even if that's just because you've done it for you, you've done it for some free clients at the start, that's fine because you're still trying to get stuff to happen in the market. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, this, it, 
you can't if you don't have any social proof or or anything at the start, which you don't, you have to go and get that social proof, right? You have to go and get that. Oh, this person seems interested in what they're doing. And you're going to make mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake. But as long as you learn from those and you try to continue to build on your reputation and continue to build on, you know, reach out to people who are ahead of you and say, hey, look, I'm struggling with this. You know, what would you suggest? You know, consume people's podcasts who are ahead of you. You know, if there's someone that you love the work of, in most cases, they've probably got some content talking about, you know, where they came from, how they did it, why they did it, what they do. And if they don't, ask them. I don't know anyone who would be like, no, I'm not going to talk to you because you're new. Yeah. I'm sure they exist, yeah. but, you know, I, I, I haven't personally found it. Everyone I've asked is like, yeah, yeah, let's jump on a call. Let's chat, you know. And I always try my best to help people who are starting out. And, you know, for me, is that counterintuitive to my business? Maybe. Also, the other way of looking at it is actually the more people who sing the praises of video, the more likelihood people are going to want to potentially buy video or purchase video or, or invest in video. OK, so then the pool just got bigger. Yeah, yeah. We're almost uh, towards the end. Um, what's the best way of for someone to contact you and get in touch and find out more about you? Uh, I mean, we're Brunton Media everywhere, uh, website, www.brunnermedia.com. Uh, everywhere on Brunton Media, basically excluding LinkedIn, which is Carlton Brunton. Uh, so same as the company, but with my name in front of it. And uh, yeah, just drop me a DM, drop me a reach out, consume some content if you want to. We post pretty regularly. Um, I'm not going to say we post daily because we might not at that point. Um, we're doing an experiment at the moment where we are posting daily, but you know, we've got huge amounts of content that you could consume if you're interested in, but also I'm always happy to have a chat and see how we can potentially help you or, or vice versa, you know, in that respect as well. So, and I just yeah. want to thank you for also for having me on as well. And, uh, you know, oh, welcome. welcome to the podcast game. Yeah, it's, exactly. Uh, it's great fun, you know. I've dipped my toe in it and um, You've got to do it now. You've got to, now. you've got to commit now. I was going <laughs> to say, you've got to commit now. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But yeah, it's been a pleasure, Carlton. And um and hopefully we'll have you back on again because we have a you 100%. know we'll have a like a update updates every now every now and again. Hundred percent. Right. Cheers, mate.